The latest 538 model is out, and can you all say front runner Bernie Sanders? <laughs> it's pretty wild. Team Rising is here. Roger Fisk is a Democratic strategist, Obama administration alum, and Tom Rogan. He's a commentary writer for the Washington Examiner. Two great friends of the show. Good to see you guys. Good morning. Okay, so I feel like we've been through a bad slow news week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. This nothing to talk about. Frankly, stunned mo a lot of us. I mean, Nate Silver, no friend uh, to Sanders. I mean, I think the Sanders campaign hates him more than any other <laughs> election prognosticator. And yet, let's throw up the Super Tuesday projection map from 538. Roger, I mean, what we're going to see here they is make, that Bernie, they like him a little bit more now. Bernie is basically projected to win every single Super Tuesday state except South Carolina and Alabama. And even in those two states, he's projected to uh, at a, basically a tie vote with Biden. I mean, and these Roger, are all the early states and Super Tuesday states. Roger, you, you've, you've lived through this campaign. I mean, despite the fact that Iowa doesn't have the slingshot, as, as you always like to say, that we still are in a position now where Biden has completely crumbled in so many of the states where he has expected to have shown his real firewall. Yeah. I mean, I would say Super Tuesday is kind of his put up or shut up kind of moment, yeah. right? And and also, thanks so much for having me. And, always. And for, always uh, love having, having you. Me here with um Tom, it's it's very very interesting. I've been thinking about this a lot. When you remove the net, the press narrative, uh, because uh, you know we're so used to loading up the planes right after Iowa, and then you go and you, yeah. you do a morning rally in Portsmouth or whatever, and and then all of a sudden that whole kind of North Star is gone in terms of the national conversation. Yes. You don't have anyone running around with the this mantle, and it's very interesting when you remove that kind of layer of kind of imposed structure or narrative. Um, so now the folks in New Hampshire are just like, who do we, you know, who, yeah. who's, who's Now where? they're the Iowans. They're right. All, yeah, and, then the, and then the real interesting thing is this, like, um, in this absence of a, of, a, of a mandate coming out of Iowa is um, I think there would have been a really interesting story around Klobuchar essentially doubling in the last 20 days. Like, I find that I find she that interesting. She rivaled Biden for, <laughs> she for basically I mean, did as well as Biden. Lord knows by the time yeah. these results get corrected, maybe she will have rivaled, yeah. you know, <laughs> still in fourth place. Who yeah. knows? Yeah. Who knows? I mean, I understand that the, the, the address for the app developer is a WeWork space. Yes, right. So uh, that, yeah, there that, you should, go. that should provide comfort Two companies where we have a great, great amount of confidence. And what do you make of all this, Tom? It's, it's, a, it's a crazy dynamic. One thing that uh, Crystal was saying is, you know, we have not yet really reckoned with the fact that a Democratic Socialist might have won the Iowa yeah. caucuses. And it's definitely won the vote. Most definitely votes. won the popular vote. I mean, so, I mean, it's insane. It's it, insane. It, the degree to which Iowa is yeah. just uh, beyond an embarrassment. I mean, it's a yeah. satire. It's a Monty <laughs> Python sketch now. Yeah, right. But the problem is, it's a serious problem yeah. in, the, in that you have political constituencies, voters. There's mm -hmm. nothing more American, prospectively, than casting a vote and expecting it to be valued accordingly. And, and we truly don't know either whether the results are accurate uh, or, if they're not accurate, whether certain individuals were uh, behaving with some malfeasance. Yeah, I mean, just right. the whole... In fact, we, we know that the results are not accurate. Mm, right. I mean, that's the New York Times reporting. We right. know that the results are riddled with errors. What we don't know, and they, they purport, although I, I, would, I would say it's very impossible to know that this is really the case, that they seem to be just incompetence and don't seem to disproportionately benefit one candidate. But I'll tell you, I mean, in terms of what's being surfaced on social media, you had the Tom Steyer and Deval Patrick yeah. column been moved over to Bernie Sanders. You had state delegate equivalents being taken from him and given to, to Warren. I mean, this is just, we know that they're wrong. The only question is how wrong. Roger, you live I mean, like third several. preference and all this. I mean, yeah. I don't even understand what these people are talking about. Well, that's just take so a vote. You, you <laughs> did several right. Iowa caucuses. Was it this crazy? Was it was it always like this? Or was Well, it's, 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 an ex it's a very wooly exercise, yeah. right? I mean, uh, and we talk about it a lot, but when in, in its actual application, you're talking about, you know, 600 people in a gym for about three hours, and then there's horse trading and everything else. Um, it's, it's very interesting. Uh, the, there, there's kind of a, there's a cultural slash kind of corporate sociological element to this. When, I, when, we, when you take a step back, it is fascinating to me 
uh, and, and not a little unnerving, that we live in an era where some kind of cultural institution that we just look at and assume is just going to be part of the landscape for a while can topple in hours. Yeah. Like, Iowa is yeah. gone. Yeah. Yeah. Iowa is G-O-N-E gone yeah. as, yeah. as, as part of the calendar. This will never happen again. Yeah, and the, the, yeah. in a lot of ways, it crystallizes a dynamic that was already kind of out there. I mean, every cycle, there's the, why should we have Iowa go first? And then that kind of also gives New Hampshire a little bit of a pass because everyone focuses on Iowa. But like this now crystallizes all of that. Um, which then leads to the conversation, then do you go to some kind of rotating thing? Do you go to a, a lottery? Do you go to alphabetical? Like, alphabetical. It's, it's, it's very, very interesting. Should it, should it just migrate? Should it just go to different states? And then how do you train them and everything else? Because being an early state, having that be part of your culture, part of your civic appetite, right, is is something that the, the news media and the political world somewhat depends on, right, that there's a culture yeah. in Iowa, there's a culture in New Hampshire, the voters South too. Carolina, et cetera, that is essentially a prefab structure to go in and do your thing. And then all of a sudden you make the first state Missouri, yeah. and then four years later it's Alaska. Imagine right. that, <laughs> which is, I guess, you know, inevitable. It, it leads to a very fascinating series of questions. Really but question. I do wonder, I mean, Tom, looking at these projections, which are just mm -hmm. projections at this point from yeah. Nate Silver, so look, take them with a grain of salt. I would not write off Joe Biden altogether, right. although I think things look very dim for him, especially given the fundraising picture and the fact that money is rapidly running dry. But do you think that the media has really processed that, that Bernie Sanders really is the front runner at this point? I mean, Pete Buttigieg has no um, demonstrated ability to reach out to the kind of constituencies, win over the type of constituencies he would need. Elizabeth Warren had a very lackluster performance in Iowa and has really had her thunder stolen from Pete. Biden obviously had the, the bottom fallout of, of his campaign and as running dry on funds. You got Bloomberg waiting in the wings, but, you know, is that really going to amount to what you think he could when he's not laying the groundwork? He hasn't been laying the groundwork for months. All he's got is ads on the air, and he doesn't have the kind of momentum effect of being in these early states. Do you think that the media has really wrapped their head around that Bernie Sanders truly is a frontrunner at this point? Well, I think it's happening now. I think there is this the mix of panic. Like and today. Also, like right, <laughs> right now. Like right now. Going yeah, yeah, yeah. Right Literally now. right now. Literally right now. <laughs> uh, it, it, it was not happening. I think there was an expectation he'd sort of fall away. But you see that both in the... The class of Democrats, um, we obviously saw the reporting on John Kerry and, mm. you know, others who are concerned about this potential. But I do think the media is coming around to the idea for the simple fact of math and for the simple fact of Biden's not just implosion, but just total implosion. Yeah. I mean, down at the, I just did the, the results here. I don't see how you can look at that with, you know, in politics, military strategy, whatever it is, that the idea of momentum, seizing the strategic right. initiative. He's lost that. I mean, he's just been pummeled. And so how prospectively, I mean, and, and, and as you suggest, Crystal, what is the alternative mm. that, that's waiting in the wings here? And I think that that is why, you know, people in the media, even if they're reluctant, are like, uh-oh. You know? Yeah, I'm fascinated by it. Roger, I mean, you, you we're looking at the looking at the Biden results, that's the one, the only definitive story we have out of Iowa is that he completely imploded, was not a, got as many, half the number of votes that both Bernie and Buttigieg got in terms of the popular vote. Stunning, stunning defeat. Well, how, how do you think that happens? They didn't, yeah. they didn't lose this game in the last 72 hours. Mm -hmm. I, I would submit that they lost it three or four months ago in this way. Where, where I, and, and by the way, I've, I've read some of the comments on the YouTube clips from your yes. show, and yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm supposedly a shill for the Trump State Department <laughs> and any number of other things. I'm not affiliated with anyone. Were, <laughs> I, were I providing counsel to the Biden folks a couple months ago, I would have had them say, he said, have him basically say, look at, I'm not like the, the, the new product. I'm, you know, you know who I am, warts, wrinkles and all. You know, I'm going to try to do my best to be competitive in the early states and then bank on my name recognition going into Super Tuesday, right? Yeah. Set up the idea that yeah, I'm going to be third or fourth, but I'm chugging along, I'm dependable, we'll mm -hmm. bring the country back between the 40 yard lines, et cetera. Then this would make sense. Then you could say, like, this is what yeah, I've been right. saying all along. I'm, I, but you know, I'm fourth, eh, you know, I got, yeah, I got a bus ticket out of Iowa, right. states right. et cetera. You go to New Hampshire. New Hampshire rewards longevity a, a little bit more. Iowa tends to gravitate, at least on our side of the aisle, uh, Iowa gravitates towards newer slash reformers. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then New Hampshire tends to pull that back a little bit and, and, and gravitate more towards 
longevity. Um, so when he said he expected to win Iowa was essentially when he lost. Yeah. In yeah. My, in well, I also think that we are seeing you can't wait around like this whole firewall idea. I'm going to wait till South Carolina. Or I'm going to wait till Florida and Rudy Giuliani gets like. This doesn't wait, work out. Yeah, People so. move on. The dynamics shift too quickly, and that's what they are finding out right that's now. That's what we said yeah. all along, isn't it? Um, indeed right. it is. All right, Thanks, gentlemen, guys. stick with us. We got more right after this.